The battlefield lay in stark contrast to the snow-covered peaks beyond, the chill air ringing with the clash of steel and the cries of men. The combined armies of the North, the Vale and the Riverlands crashed relentlessly against the disciplined formation of the Lannisters, who, under Jaime's command, held their ground with ferocity. Despite the constant charges by the Vale Knights, the Lannister lines held firm, their numbers and armour acting as a bulwark against the storm. Ned Stark rode along the ridges, observing the ebb and flow of battle below, his brow furrowed with concern. His forces were formidable and determined, but the Lannister host was vast, outnumbering them nearly two to one. Every time the North and its allies threw themselves against the Lannister lines, the Lannister shields would absorb the blows and their soldiers would reform, unwavering. Among the chaos, Jaime Lannister stood out, his golden hair and gleaming armour visible even from afar. He cut through opponents with lethal precision, commanding his men with fierce resolve. As long as Jaime fought, the Lannister line seemed invincible, refusing to break or falter. Ned knew what he had to do. Calling over his bannerman, he summoned Sir Barristan Selmy, the man who had been his companion and ally since King's Landing, and the Great John, who towered over the rest. We need to shatter their spirit, Ned said to Sir Barristan, his voice as cold as the northern wind. Take Jamie out of the fight, and the Lannister lines will crumble. Sir Barristan regarded him, his gaze steady. I understand, Lord Stark. It will be done. The Great John thumped a hand to his chest, grinning fiercely, and the two men mounted their horses, gathering fifty of the fiercest Northmen around them. Together, they charged toward the heart of the Lannister lines, their steeds kicking up snow and mud as they went. The lines of Lannister soldiers held steady, but even they hesitated at the sight of the great Sir Barristan, white cloak billowing behind him, and the giant form of the Great John leading the charge. The Lannister soldiers were valiant, but buckled under the ferocity of the assault. Sir Barristan cut through the ranks with a deadly grace that spoke of years of honed skill. Every strike precise, every movement calculated. The Great John roared as he cleaved through the enemy, his laughter booming even louder than the cries of battle. Amidst the carnage, Jamie's keen gaze caught sight of the old knight he'd long admired. In the midst of chaos, he nudged his horse forward, signalling for a halt among his men. Sir Barristan dismounted, his eyes narrowing as he took in Jamie's familiar smirk. Jamie dismounted as well, his own sword glinting in the faint light. The two approached each other, the sounds of battle fading, as soldiers on both sides turned to watch the confrontation. Jamie broke the silence with a dry smile. I always wondered if we'd meet like this, Sir Barristan the Bold. Sir Barristan's expression softened, but only slightly. I take no pleasure in it, Jamie, but it must be done. Jamie nodded, his grin fading to something more somber, and he returned the respect with a tilt of his head. Likewise, they circled each other, sword drawn, eyes locked in a silent exchange. Then, without another word, they clashed, each man moving with a skill and speed that made them legends. Jamie fought with the quicksilver grace of youth, each strike sharp and fierce, his movements calculated to exploit any weakness. Sir Barristan met each blow with equal precision, his age betrayed only by the subtle calm and restraint in his motions. For every feint Jamie attempted, Barristan countered, his expression grimly focused. Steel clanged against steel, and every watching soldier seemed to hold their breath, the gravity of the duel weighing heavily on them. The duel was long and brutal, each warrior refusing to give ground. The onlookers fell silent, their attention riveted on the two men. Their comrades, the entire battle seemed to hinge on the outcome of this clash. After what felt like an eternity, Sir Barristan spotted a weakness in Jamie's stance. With a swift, decisive move, he thrust his blade forward, and Jamie staggered, the sword piercing his armour just above the hip. A hush fell over the battlefield as Jamie collapsed, blood pooling at his feet. Sir Barristan stood over him, his breathing ragged, and he looked down at Jamie with a mixture of regret and sorrow. Yield, Jamie, he said softly. It's over. Jamie gritted his teeth, refusing to yield even as the pain twisted his face. He managed a weak smile. Never. A hint of respect touched Barristan's expression. 
I'd expect nothing less. He raised his sword to deliver the final blow, but in a last burst of defiance, Jamie surged upwards, his own blade slicing through Barristan's army and finding its mark. Sir Barristan staggered, his face going pale as the sword pierced his heart. He fell, his last breath escaping in a low whisper. Jamie too collapsed moments later, the life fading from his eyes as he crumpled to the ground beside the fallen knight. For a long, breathless moment, the battlefield was silent, soldiers from both sides staring in shock at the fallen champions. Then, a northern horn rang out, and a resounding cry erupted from the northern forces. Fueled by the sacrifice of their knight, they surged forward with renewed fury, crashing into the Lannister lines with devastating force. The Lannisters fought bravely, but with Jaime gone, their discipline began to falter. Shouts of alarm spread through their ranks as they realised their strongest leader had fallen. Slowly, the once unbreakable line began to waver. At the rear, Tywin Lannister watched the scene unfold, his face unreadable as he absorbed the news of Jamie's death. For the briefest moment, an expression of grief crossed his face, but it vanished as quickly as it had come. His voice rang out, cold and unyielding. Hold your positions, he commanded. There will be no retreat. We fight to the death. But the morale of the Lannister troops was shattered. Officers turned to Tywin, some pleading with him to surrender, others murmuring in fearful desperation. One brave officer stepped forward, daring to suggest retreat, but Tywin's response was swift and merciless. He drew his dagger, plunging it into the man's chest without hesitation. We fight to the death, he repeated, his voice hard as iron. But the Lannister ranks were crumbling. More and more soldiers abandoned their posts, fleeing into the woods as the northern forces closed in around them. Tywin's stoic composure could no longer mask the chaos erupting around him. At last, the northern, Riverland and Vale forces surrounded him, trapping Tywin at the centre of his broken army. And in the midst of the blood-soaked field, Ned Stark himself rode forward, his greatsword ice gleaming in the cold light. Tywin held his head high, his gaze unwavering as he looked upon the man who had bested him. Congratulations, Lord Stark, he said, his voice dripping with venom. You've won the North, but do not think I will kneel to you. Ned regarded him, his expression hard. I don't expect you to, Tywin. Without another word, he lifted ice and with a single powerful swing, cut off Tywin's head. The battlefield erupted in cheers as Tywin's head fell the great Lord of the Westerlands finally defeated. The sound of the northern Riverland and Vale forces roaring in victory echoed across the fields, and the cries of triumph carried far into the night. The survivors gathered, their hearts lightened by the knowledge that they had secured northern independence, the spectre of Lannister power vanquished. Ned walked amongst his people, finally allowing himself to feel the relief and pride he had held back. His gaze softened as he spotted his children, Rob, Sansa and Bran among the crowd. They ran to him, embracing him, their faces filled with joy and awe. We did it, Rob murmured, his voice thick with emotion. Ned smiled, a rare expression of warmth on his face as he looked down at his children. Yes, he replied, his voice quiet but resolute. We did. And as the first light of dawn broke over the battlefield, the North stood together, united, stronger than ever before. In that moment, amidst the joy of victory, they knew that no matter the trials ahead, they would face them as one, bound by blood and honour, forever loyal to their land and each other. <laughs>